Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and this is the Lost Empire. And while it looks like he's sailing in the Tier 9 American battleship, the USS Iowa, he is in fact not, because that is the Mighty Mo BB-63, the USS Missouri herself. The Lost Empire has blown three quarters of a million free experience on unlocking this ship. The Missouri is pretty unique for a couple of reasons. First, it's the only Tier 9 Premium available in any wargaming title. World of Warplanes, World of Tanks, or World of Warships. The second reason it's unique is that you can't just go out and buy it. You can only access the USS Missouri by spending 750,000 free experience. Now, I like that because it means that well, if you have 750,000 free experience lying around on your account, you've played a few games of World of Warships, so you're unlikely to see... You know, it's not like when you see a premium tier 8 heavy tank on your team in World of Tanks, whether that's a KV-5 or a Nerva or a T-34, and if you happen to have certain mods installed, you can see that the person driving that tank has only got 400 battles played. <laughs> so... You know, there's no wallet warriors going to be playing the USS Missouri. Experienced players only are going to have that amount of free experience lying around available to be converted in order to unlock this ship. So when you see somebody in the Missouri on your team, you know that they're going to have played a few games of World of Warships. They're going to be an experienced player. They're not just going to be some wallet warrior who flashed their credit card and jumped into a Tier 8 Premium, for example, um, when they've only been playing the game for half an hour. So, there's that. The thing about free experience, however, as many people were quick to point out, was that it is anything but free. If you have a whole bunch of experience locked on various different elite ships, it's going to cost you, assuming you're converting all 750,000 from locked experience on premium ships into free experience in order to unlock the Missouri, it's going to cost you something in the region of $120 because the gold that you use to convert locked experience into free experience is anything but free. At the same time, however, I think it's extremely unlikely that anybody's ever really had to pay the full conversion rate for all three quarters of a million free experience, because you earn free experience just by playing World of Warships. A certain percentage of all the experience that you earn at the end of a battle comes as free experience. And there are various different flags that you can fly that boost the free experience that you earn. There are various different camo patterns that you can apply that boost the free experience that you earn and if you play on a 100% bonus weekend for example it's not unusual to earn anything between two and three thousand free experience on top of the regular experience that's locked on the ship that you played per game but that's enough about the cost of unlocking the Missouri Lost Empire's got one and let's actually focus on what's going on in the battle here so he's just charging straight into a whole bunch of enemy cruisers He's yet to score a big hit, and he's had to use his damage control and his damage repair ability already, but check out the shores up in front there. He's just gone down, but it wasn't anybody on Lost Empire's team who sank him. He actually sank to flooding damage from torpedoes fired by the dumbass in the Nachi. See, it's not just dumbasses in destroyers who do it, you can get dumbasses in cruisers who fire torpedoes from behind friendly ships as well. Still, one less cruiser to worry about, and the Lost Empire is playing very aggressively here. He's yet to score any seriously big hits with his guns, however. Well, that's about to change as he pumps two 16-inch shells straight into the citadel of the ALP Hagero there. But look at the way the Hagero turned. He's pulled that turn far too early to make it into cover around the side of the island. The Nachi over there, who sank the shores on his own team, is going to make it around the side of the island. But all the Hagero's succeeded in doing is beaching himself, and now he's just about to get blown out of the water by the Fletcher. Why would he pull a turn like that? Get his torpedoes away. Is it going to be worth it? Um, doesn't look like it. Nope. <laughs> They've all missed. Now then, that Turpitz, just a fraction over six kilometres away, and the Turpitz does have six kilometre range torpedoes, and he's slow there which has to mean he is getting ready to fire those torpedoes. The Nachi is on the other side of the island. Lost Empire starts turning in towards the likely direction of the torpedoes. Meanwhile, the rear turret on the Missouri hasn't had an awful lot to do, and there's a York there who's a one-shot kill, but he does manage to get his torpedoes away and sink the ARP Takao. Lost Empire fires a salvo with the rear turrets. 
correctly anticipated the torpedoes from the Tirpitz, manages to avoid them and takes out the York for his first kill of the game. Lost Empire now has a choice of targets. There's the ARP Nachi and there's the Tirpitz. The Tirpitz has just fired his torpedoes and the Nachi is at very low speed and showing the broadside of the ship. But why would he do that? He must have just fired his torpedoes. And yep, Lost Empire's already started turning towards him and there are the torpedoes in the water. Lost Empire's probably going to take one of those torpedoes and it'll be the first torpedo that guy's fired that's actually hit an enemy ship this game. But he does substantially more damage to the Nachi than the Nachi does to him and leaves him on 484 health. That's just one citadel and two armor-piercing penetrations. Meanwhile, he swings the ship around so he can get his rear gun turret into the game. Once again, they just killed the York and they just finished off the Nachi as well. So the gunnery chief in the rear turret is going to have an expensive night in the mess at the end of this battle and he's going to have to so far buy two rounds of beers for everybody working in the rear turret. The good news is that the Tirpitz has been taken out by the rest of his team so he doesn't have to worry about getting Citadel from the port side. The bad news is that right after killing the Nachi, the Nachi's 203mm high explosive shells arrived and set him on fire. And he's already burned his damage control ability to control the flooding and the earlier fires that had been set. So he's just going to have to burn for a little bit, although the crew should have the fire under control soon. He uses his damage repair ability to try to arrest the amount of damage that he's taken and there, the fire is out. So he's recovering some health. Nobody's shooting at him. He's got two kills. He's done 63,000 damage. Now at this point, I'm going to slow the video down because I spotted something in the replay and I don't think Lost Empire did. There. Do you see that? I actually had to frame by frame this. I thought I saw something and I had to frame by frame it to actually identify what it was. There's one single solitary shell sailing gracefully through the air from somewhere in the direction, well, more or less where he's looking right now, but nothing spotted down there. At first I thought it was one of the enemy destroyers, but, well, as events will transpire, nope, there's the Kagero. That's what I thought it might have been. But the Yugamo and the Benson on the enemy team are both down in that direction as well. So I have, it's an absolute mystery. There's a bunch of enemy battleships down to the south. There's North Carolina and an Iowa, but the, the North Carolina's 34 kilometers away. And even if there was a ship down there that managed to fire without being detected, what were they shooting at? There's nothing over on that side of the map. Lost Empire is the easternmost ship on his team. There's nobody else over on that side of the map for them to be shooting at. So I have no idea what fired that shot. And I have even less idea what they were firing at. If you have any suggestions, then please let me know in the comments, because it is a complete mystery to me. Anyway, his repairs are complete. He's on 44,000 health. There's a North Carolina down there on 60,000 health. There's a full health Gneiser now, and there's an Iowa down there, who is also, I believe, more or less on full health. Now, he was a little aggressive at the beginning of this match, I'm sure you'll agree. Um... And he is going to calm down just a little bit. That Fletcher up ahead is going to provide some absolutely outstanding support. He is a complete team player, that guy. For now, however, target in range. There were a lot of the Arpeggio of Blue Steel ships in this uh, particular battle. We've had a Hagaro, a Nachi, two Takaos. Then again, you had a limited time to get your hands on these ships. The missions are ending in January, I believe, so it's probably not surprising that you're seeing people playing them a lot, probably trying to unlock the captains for them, and also because, well, they're premium ships, they're good, well, they're good ships. That Takao, however, is about to make a serious error of judgment. He's just, yeah, he's not watching where he's going. <laughs> so his rear turret's opening up there. He's obviously focusing on shooting at targets behind him, and oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, he's done. Yes, well, that was fairly inevitable. Sail into an island like that while you're desperately trying to evade shots being fired at you and it does really start to limit your options. Anyway, there's the Fletcher. Check this out. He's not laying the smoke screen for himself. He's laying the smoke screen for Lost Empire in the Missouri. How do you know that, Jingles? Well, he doesn't stay in the smoke screen. And Lost Empire is going to take full advantage of it as he puts some shots downrange in the general direction of this Benson. He gets spotted as soon as he fires, but there, now he's in the cover of the smokescreen. And the Benson keeps powering out of the smokescreen. How do you know that, Jingles? Well, we can still see all of those targets. Don't forget, smokescreens work both ways. You can't see through them, but you can't see out of them either. 
and Lost Empire has still got lots and lots of juicy targets to shoot at. That's because of the Benson. There he goes. He's dropped the smoke. He's covering Lost Empire's ship. And then he's powering out of the smoke. So he can keep spotting all of these targets. So that his team in general, and Lost Empire in particular, can shoot at them. Without having to worry about annoying things like being fired back at. Shots out at the Benson. And... Oh, he actually scored a hit. There's the smoke screen boundary. Fletcher's got his torpedoes away. Big old spread there. He's obviously not really aiming them at any one ship in particular. He's just trying to hedge his bets there and cause as many problems for as many enemy ships as possible. And oh, look at that target. Rear turrets. Is the rear turret gunnery chief going to have to buy another round for the crew? No, just the one penetration. A little disappointing. Benson, not quite in secondary gun battery range, but he hits him again. And Lost Empire slowed down, but, well, the Missouri's a big old ship, and it's fast, so it does take time to slow down. The Benson is now in secondary gun battery range, and they are opening up, but, well, it's very unusual to see a Missouri or an Iowa specialised for secondary gun batteries. Oh, the Benson is in the turn. He's got him! And plot twist, it was actually the secondaries that scored the kill. He's just earned himself a close quarters expert award. And his third kill, but oh, can he make it four? Look at the, you're never going to get a better target than that. Shots out at the North Carolina. Cross your fingers. They look pretty good. Oh, that'll do. <laughs> yes, that will definitely do. Now the Iowa. Oh, man. Why do I never get guys sailing like this when I'm in a battleship? I mean, the Iowa's got a tough choice to make here. He can't angle his armour against everything shooting at him, so he basically has to choose who he wants to get citadeled by, and he appears to have chosen to get citadeled by the Lost Empire in the Missouri, which is doubtless very frustrating for the Colorado that he's pointing the nose of the ship towards. There he is. But it's party time for Lost Empire in the Missouri, and the question is, which turret's going to get the kill? There's a potential kraken up for grabs here. The front turrets had their chance, and they blew it. He's swinging the arse around. Is the rear turret gunnery chief going to have to buy a third round of beer for the rear turret crew? Nope, nope, his bar bill is safe. It looks like the front turrets are going to have another shot. Shots out. He's got to sink him. Kraken unleashed. Five kills, 141,669 damage. And, well, there's still ships left to kill. There's the Yugamo, but he's managed to get himself into a gunfight with a Fletcher. That's probably not going to work out too well for him. He's turning away, he must have fired torpedoes. This poor guy's taking shots from three different directions. But it's the 16 inch shells from the mighty Mo! that are going to send him to the bottom. Look at that. Six kills. Wow. <laughs> I think it's fairly safe to say that uh, the Lost Empire actually caught... Oh, yes, there were the torpedoes. The Fletcher knew they must have been coming. He easily managed to avoid them. Check out this uh, hot, sweaty, nice and hour, nice and hour action. They're both trying to torpedo each other. But one of them sailing broadside onto the other, and one of them isn't. Um... <laughs> And that just leaves the Kagero. But the match is about to end. 995 points, 998. The Colorado over there getting very pissed off with the enemy destroyer. Who keeps trying to torpedo him, but too late. Colorado survives. Game over. 1,000 points for the winning team. How about that Missouri, though? So how did Lost Empire do? Well, he didn't send me all of the post-battle results screens, but, well, he sent me the ones that matter. First of all, position in the team. Unsurprisingly, top with over 2,000 base experience. And shout out, by the way, to Nico Toy there in the Fletcher, who finished second on the team. Only one kill of his own, but he probably did very, very well out of spotting damage, thanks to, well, in no small part, thanks to the smokescreen that he provided for Lost Empire and allowed him to farm all kinds of damage on those enemy battleships while undetected. But how much money do you think he made out of this game? Don't forget, Tier 8 premiums are exceptional money makers in both World of Warships and World of Tanks. You never lose money when you're playing a tier 8 premium, whether it's a warship or a tank. But the Missouri 
is a tier 9 premium, so does it have a better credit earning coefficient? Well, I don't know for sure, but The Lost Empire made not far short of a million credits out of this game, so it's entirely possible. <laughs> And I think it's fairly safe to say that he does not regret the 750,000 free experience he had to use to unlock this ship. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's replay. Thank you, Lost Empire, for sending that one in. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.